All right, so for the final lecture for Chapter 12, we'll start off by talking about how data from hurricanes is collected. And as you can tell from the slide here, um, it is collected from people that fly airplanes through the hurricane, something that I would personally not want to do, but I think maybe some of you guys that are uh, pilots would like to do that. So here you see some of the different aircraft that are used. Uh, they are laden with different sensors for measuring temperature and pressure and all kinds of information. And I've put together some YouTube videos that you can uh, link to from the extra videos section. Here's some data from Hurricane Earl that was measured by NASA from, um, from a flight. So you can see the airplane symbol here and the path that this airplane took and the data that was collected from the sensors on board the plane has been overlaid on top of a satellite imagery image showing the hurricane. So this is Hurricane Earl from September of 2010 and what we see here in this path of data from the airplane is different colors and it says that the different colors have to do with the temperatures. So the cooler the temperatures, the cooler the color, the blues and the greens, and then the warmer the temperatures, the warmer the color. So you can see right around the eye, which is in this portion here, is the eye wall and that has the highest temperatures. And then the pink X's represent lightning strikes. So this poor plane was just getting battered by lightning it looks like as it was flying through the, the roughest part of that storm. Here is pressure data from on board an aircraft that flew through the eye of Hurricane Bonnie back in the 90s. And as you can see here, the pressure drops. So here's our pressure in millibars. And as we go through the eye, the eye of course is the lowest pressure of the storm and you see that portrayed here in this cross-sectional data. Some of the hazards of hurricanes. First of all, heavy rains and inland flooding. So we get a lot of freshwater flooding that comes inland from uh, tropical cyclones or the remnants. They may no longer be tropical cyclones. They might be various stages, but they still are producing a lot of precipitation inland. We have strong winds associated with hurricanes. These are responsible for 12% of the deaths from the same period of time. And that period of time is from 1970 to 1999. So you see above 60% of the deaths are due to flooding, 12% from strong winds. And then we also have tornadoes that can spawn from hurricanes. So that presents a whole nother hazard. And then the storm surge. This is where most of the fatalities took place with Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina, of course, uh, 2005 hurricane in New Orleans that uh, just destroyed New Orleans. And uh, we have a slide here that shows the storm surge. So you see the storm, or, sorry, the sea during its normal high tide. So here's uh, the mean sea level. The line here is sea level and we have uh, our coastal area and then during a storm surge we have our mean sea level that's being breached by in some cases five meters it can go up to about 16 feet so far above a normal high tide so the storm surge comes in and it just wipes out everything that it comes into contact with and then when that water pulls back it rushes out to sea there's a strong current that just pulls everything back out to sea. So you can read more about this in the textbook, but um, this is devastating to areas along the coast. The Saffir Simpson scale is a way of measuring hurricane wind speed and the damages associated with it, and then categorizing the hurricane based on that. So you see here in the first column the category of the hurricane. In the second column we have the wind speed, in kilometers per hour as well as miles per hour. So ranging from the lowest to the highest. And then the damage potential. So a category one hurricane has dangerous winds that will produce some damage. A hurricane two is extremely dangerous and the winds can cause extensive damage. 
a Category 3 hurricane whose winds are between 111 to 129 miles per hour, devastating damage will occur. Uh, category 4, so we get winds up to 156 miles per hour, catastrophic damage will occur. And then Category 5, which has very strong winds, 157 miles per hour or higher, again, catastrophic damage will occur. This table, 12.2, lists the most intense U.S. hurricanes and intense based on the lowest central pressure. So this is a record from 1900 to 2011. So a long period of time for U.S. hurricanes. And you can see uh, the ranking uh, where it comes in terms of the most intense, the year that it took place, the category the storm was. Notice these are all three, four, and five categories and the pressure that was recorded. So the lowest pressure was recorded in 1935 and what's called the Labor Day hurricane before they were naming them the way that we do now. This happened in the Florida Keys. Look at that low pressure, 892 millibars. Unbelievably low. Category 5 hurricane. And you can go on down the line. Here's Hurricane Katrina that affected Louisiana and also Mississippi and Alabama. It was a category, or sorry, it was, yes, it was a category three hurricane and uh, its pressure was 920 millibars. So some of the more recent hurricanes here, Hurricane Rita also in, in 2005 uh, that affected Northeast Texas and West Louisiana, um, category three, and its pressure was ranked at 937. So a lot of these hurricanes go back well before our time. Um, I remember Hurricane Andrew. I was in graduate school at that time, so we studied the heck out of Hurricane Andrew. And uh, it was a big one for Florida and Louisiana, Category 5 storm with a pressure of 922 millibars. We'll see what this year's hurricane season has to bring. This table lists the 10 deadliest U.S. hurricanes. So uh, how many people were killed in that same time period from 1900 to 2011? The most deadliest hurricane has been um, in Texas, in Galveston, Texas, along the, the Gulf Coast. In the year 1900, Category 4 hurricane killed over 8,000 people. Back in those days, they didn't have much warning, and uh, the structures were just um, you know, not built as, as strong to code. And this hurricane was just uh, unbelievable. I mean, can you imagine something like that happening in the U.S. today? And then uh, more recent, in more recent history, Hurricane Katrina made the list at number three. There were over 1,200 people killed. Uh, let's see, what else most recently? Nothing, nothing recent. These all go back before our lifetimes. Here's a trend in hurricane frequency. And what we have here are five-year periods across the x-axis, beginning from 1970 and 74, that five-year period, and on up to 2000-2004. On the left y-axis, we have number of hurricanes by category. And on the right y-axis, we have the intensity, the meters per second, which is a measure of the uh, category due to wind speeds. So you see here that the number of hurricanes themselves are kind of decreasing. We're kind of on a downward trend here, but that the number of Category 4 and 5 hurricanes has increased. So we've had a marked increase in intense hurricanes, even though the number of um, hurricanes has kind of gone down over the last 10-15 uh, year period. And then finally, here we have Atlantic tropical cyclones and hurricanes. We see the number of named storms, which is the bars in red, over the years. And then the black bar represents the number of those named storms that went on to become hurricanes. And you can see some years have real spikes. So this was 2005 when we had Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita, as well as others. It was a very intense year for hurricanes and you can just get a sense of um, the trend, how it follows these up and downs. But we do get these spikes nowadays, um, and a lot of uh, climatologists are attributing this to climate change and changes in the sea surface temperatures and just general dynamics of the atmosphere. The hurricane presents a particular threat to the southeastern United States. 
there was a lull of hurricane activity in the 70s and 80s that gave people the sense that it was safe, you know, that you don't have to really deal with hurricanes in these areas. And it encouraged development along the coast, and a lot of people moved and houses were built. And in 2005, the coast, the east coast is, uh, southeast coast specifically, is home to 53% of all Americans. So the population growth has been most rapid from Texas through the Carolinas, especially in Florida. So now that we're kind of entering a period of more hurricanes, the public safety officials are very concerned because we've attracted all these people to these areas and now it's just kind of a disaster potentially waiting to happen. This map shows the paths of three hurricanes that uh, struck Florida in 2004. So um, grateful I don't live in Florida, beautiful state, has a lot to be offered, but during hurricane season, I mean, chances are you're going to get nailed, you know, one way or another. And in this one year, they had three hurricanes crisscross the Hurricane Peninsula, and some of them kind of make their way up into the Panhandle area.